Hey everybody, welcome to the RC Genius live stream. I don't do live streams very often on this channel, but I wanted to do something a little bit different since we're all currently home right now. In tonight's live stream, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the sidewalls of your Traxxas tires, specifically the logo that it has Traxxas. So we're going to be sh uh, going through that method. It's very easy and uh, we're going to be doing it to these four tires. Also, I hope to get to talk to some of you guys, answer some of your questions, go through your comments, see what you guys have to say. So I hope you guys enjoy this live stream. Right now I'm going to wait for some people to join in and then we'll get started. Hey, the e-boy. How's it going? Welcome to the live stream. All right, we're going to go ahead and start then. I'm going to start by taking the four tires off of this truck. Let me get a uh, another device up here to read your guys' comments just so I don't miss anything. All righty. I'm doing good, the e-boy. Um, hanging in there. Uh, been home for a very long time. And, uh, yeah. Isaac, how's it going? Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Just going to start by taking all four tires off. And, uh, and then I'm going to clean them and then start painting. It's always nice to see people who have been with this channel for a long time come back and and uh, you know always stop in on on the videos, leave a comment. It's very nice to see everybody stick around for so long. Um, I really appreciate all of the uh, support that everybody shows this channel. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers. It's literally right around the corner. So, uh, looking forward to that very soon. I'll have to do a, uh, a very special video for that. Alright, I'm just going to take a uh, basically just a, a wet towel wipe. Um, same thing that I used to clean uh, the RC car in uh, a video not too long ago, uh, how I clean my RCs for the winter. So I'm just going to use that. Isaac, yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's been quite a journey, and it's come a long way. And I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that you've been in it since, since almost the very beginning. So thank you for sticking around. Yeah, it's... Uh, I love making videos and I love sharing it with people, so it's great. Just cleaning the uh, the edges of the tires this is the last one here. Really just, just need to focus on the logo uh, that you're going to be painting, but um, but you can do the whole tire anyway. I'll give that a second to dry. I will check out the the grave digger. Um, I will check that out. I will uh, I will add that to my watch later right now. If I can find it, I'll check out. I'll I'll go to your channel and I'll I'll find it if you have it on there. Um, why is it all uh all parted out right now though? All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now what we're gonna do is uh. 
Hang on, I'm just reading comments. Whenever you hear me go silent, it's because I'm, uh, that's because I am reading the comments on my phone here. Um, Isaac says, the E-Boy, same with my maximum destruction. Uh, the gearbox is in the F1 car I made. Yeah, the F1 car was a very cool thing you did, Isaac. That was a very cool, uh, cool project. Um, hey, Dylan, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. Um, before I leave this live stream, I'm going to give you guys a cool little look at something I did to my maximum destruction. Uh, I actually added a roll cage to it uh, under the body, and I had that roll cage for a very long time, um, and I got it probably five years ago, uh, close to when I got the truck in the beginning. And um, I'll just have to show you guys the roll cage before I leave this video, but um, and I'll also uh, make another video about it as well. Alright, so I'm going to start painting it because this is going to take a little bit of time uh, and a little bit of concentration. I'm going to use a toothpick. It might not seem like the most efficient way to do it, but it's definitely the most accurate. There's no bristles of a brush that's getting uh, off track uh, on, your, on your little painting uh, course here over the logo. And I'm just going to be using a little bit of acrylic paint. Uh, it does actually stay on pretty well. I've done it to three of my other RCs and so far it has not rubbed off yet. Uh, even running in water, it's actually not rubbed off yet. So as long as you let it dry before you run the truck, it's actually pretty good. Um, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to basically follow the Traxxas outline of the logo on the edge of the tire. I don't know how good the quality is uh, coming through the live stream right now. Um, you may not be able to see it, but there is actually like a little bumped out logo on the edge of the tire. Um, if you catch the light right, you can kind of see it. So that's what we're, what I'm going to be doing is uh, basically just following that with the toothpick and a little bit of paint. Uh, just taking my time, going slow, and uh, we'll start now. Um, looks like we've got six people watching already, which is pretty good. Last time I did a live stream was easily two years ago um, and uh, the camera quality was not quite as good then as it is now also the uh, the following of the channel has greatly uh, improved and uh, and expanded so there is that as well and if you get uh, like like right here, you can kind of see, well, I don't know how well you can see, but um, the toothpick will sometimes leave like a little a little path where it was uh, between the paint. Um, and if you can't get that out by by um, just kind of adding a little bit more paint and going a little thicker, you can just add a second coat after it's dry. But definitely do it when it's dry. Don't do it when it's... Uh, uh, still wet because then you'll kind of smear it a little bit more and it won't it won't really add up um, it won't cover as well as you want it to now it looks like it's going to take a really long time from here but it's really not um, because it's not a very large logo and the first one always takes the most time because you're kind of getting the feel for uh, you know where, where you got to be how much paint you got to be putting on the toothpick so um, just give it a couple minutes and I'll, uh, I'll be going on a roll here. Thank you for the likes, everybody. Um, S. Shiggy Y, um, hello, I was just wondering, is swapping a proportional servo tricky is it as simple as just unplugging the old one and plugging in a new one? Um, if you're talking about a like a steering servo, yeah, that's pretty easy. Just you know, plug it in. Uh, you want to make sure that when you plug it into the receiver, uh, you want to make sure that you put the plug in the right way. Uh, there'll be a certain a certain white wire that's your signal wire that has to go into a certain uh, part of the receiver, um, a certain side. Uh, and also making sure that you plug it into the right channel. Most RCs, I think, uh, channel one is the the default uh, steering channel. 
Uh, I don't know if that's with every RC. There might be some that don't do that. But if that's what you're talking about, uh, servos are pretty easy to replace, uh, especially if you have the exact same servo and are just replacing uh, a direct replacement, then it should be pretty simple, straightforward. I have an MN90 Defender. I think that, uh, I think that it should be pretty straightforward to replace um, your servo. As long as, as long as it's the same kind of servo that was in your, your RC before, um, it should fit in the same spot and just put the plug in the same way that it was uh, and you should be good. There's really not a lot of calibrating that has to be done with an ESC replacement. You do have to calibrate the ESC, um, so there isn't really a lot that, has, that needs to be done with that. Um, I'm also putting in a new horn and linkages, by the way. Is that tricky? Um, it, it depends. Uh, if, if they're made for the truck, it shouldn't be very hard. Um, I don't know if you, have a, if you have adjustable linkages. That's where it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, finding that, that right length um, by adjusting the rod ends and making it uh, the proper length so that way the wheels don't kind of turn inwards or outwards uh, when they're not being turned. Uh, so that can be a little bit tricky, but really it's not that, that much. Um, especially uh, the, the horn is, is certainly easy. Um, yeah, if they're adjustable, um, just make sure that uh, the easiest thing to do is just make them the same length as what was on there already. Uh, if what was on there was working for you, uh, just make them the same length, and that's all you should need to do. Uh, do that before you put them on the vehicle. Um, and a little tip for the servo horn is when you're going to put it on the RC, um, make sure that uh, you have turned the RC on and the servo has centered itself. If the servo is not centered and then you put the servo horn on, and then turn the truck on, you're gonna find that the servo is actually not straight. Um, so just make sure that you put the, uh, the truck on first before you put the servo saver on, uh, otherwise you're going to have a crooked servo saver. Um, and once, once you've centered the servo, just turn the truck off and then you can go back to whatever you need to do to put the servo uh, saver or servo horn on. Servo, servo saver and servo horn are pretty much the same thing. So if I'm using uh, both of those words, I'm pretty much referring to the same uh, part that you're going to be using. Coming up on ending my first one here. I see we've got two viewers from the UK. Sorry it's midnight, guys. Um, if, uh, you know, you do don't need to stay in the whole stream if, if you can't. Uh, I understand that. Um, but I'm glad you're here, so thank you guys for joining. Alright, so there's pretty much the first logo. On my, on my view right now on my camera, the quality looks a little bit blurry, so I don't know if you guys can see it very clearly. But once it dries, it's going to look even better. So we're going to do that. Um, S Shiggy Y. I have a knob on the receiver that adjusts the steering angle. Um, yeah, so then if uh, huh, on the receiver that adjusts the steering angle, I don't know about that. Um, I'm not sure about uh, a, a knob on the receiver. I'm not sure if I've heard about that before. Uh, if you're talking about on the transmitter, that's adjusting the trim. Um, I'm, I'll have to look into that about the receiver. I'm not sure if I'm very familiar with that. Um, Dylan, no problem. Thanks for being here. Um, so that would help with the turning ang turning the angles. Uh, yes, theoretically. Um, yeah, so that's what you want, is you want to center the steering before you put... Or, or you want to center the servo before you put the servo horn on. Uh, once the servo horn is on, if you need to make minor adjustments, it sounds like that knob that you're talking about could do that. Uh, just like here, I can actually get uh, a transmitter to show you. 
right here is a transmitter. This is from uh, my drift car. And uh, underneath here, this little dial right here. If I turn this, it's going to very, in very small increments, uh, adjust the, or no, sorry, here. Um, it's very, in, in very small increments, it will uh, adjust the steering in case it's turning just a tiny bit too far to the left or to the right. Um, and so I can adjust it here. And that's very helpful. And if that's what you're talking about, if you have that on your receiver, I have not heard of it being on a receiver before. But if it is, then uh, that should be what that does, uh, adjusting your, your trim a little bit. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that you have the, the uh, servo centered. And all you need to do to have the servo centered is just turn the truck on. Uh, you don't need to do anything other than that. Just turn the, the remote on first, turn the truck on uh, using whatever battery you usually use to power the truck and then uh, turn it on. The servo will make it a little noise as it centers itself and then uh, just put the servo saver uh, back on there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, the uh, uh, if it's on the transmitter, then yeah, it's just an adjustment dial uh, for trim. Um, I'm just catching up on your guys's comments here. They they only appear on my my camera for a very short amount of time, so I have to check on my phone here to see what you guys are saying. Um, Yeah, so listen, so Isaac has it, uh, yeah, Isaac, that's, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying, uh, that's exactly right, um, and, uh, so yeah, as long as, as long as you make those steering linkages the same length as what was on there, if what you had on there was not adjustable, just make it the same length, like, like on this truck right back here, these are non-adjustable links. I do intend on getting some adjustable links for some of my trucks in the future because I do like them, they're stronger, um, but this is not an adjustable camber link. This is a solid plastic camber link uh, that's attached by two screws. The adjustable one will be the same, but the adjustable one has these little uh, ends that can be twisted on and off, uh, you know, left or right to, to basically make it longer or shorter. So if I were putting adjustable links on here, and in, in your case, it sounds like that's what you're doing, um, just uh, take the, the original one off and just basically size the adjustable one to the original and then you will be able to have a direct fit. Uh, adjustable links are nice because you can adjust them and uh, so if you want uh, you know a different kind of stance on your truck or if eventually uh, you I don't know just want a little bit wider you can do that. Um, the Traxxas Slash comes stock with that. Uh, the monster trucks that I use do not. Uh, let me check up on comments. Uh, Shiggy, no problem. I'm glad that you're finding the channel helpful. Um, by the way, if you if you have to use a lot of trim on this transmitter, it may use up so the uh, steering throw in one direction or the other depending on which way the servo is off center. Yeah. The, the, the first thing, if your servo is not, if your uh, steering is not centered, is go to the servo first, find out if the servo horn is centered on the servo itself, and then go to the linkages, see if they're properly sized. I used to have a problem, especially with my Gravedigger truck, which was the first that, that started my RC collection, um, and that truck basically, uh, over time, uh, started getting uh, some issues with the wheels caving outwards and um, those adjustable links uh, uh, on the you know the, the steering uh, links those over time started to uh, loosen up especially when I would do repairs like replacing a uh, steering knuckle and I would twist it by accident and then not put it uh, back around that would slowly start to lengthen the uh, the steering linkage so when I would drive, I would eventually realize that uh, the wheel started caving outwards a little bit. So you can adjust it by doing that um, and no longer have uh, wheels that are caving outward. 
let me do a comment check. Comments are good. Um, five viewers, three likes. Thanks, guys. Um, as you can see, I'm just taking uh, the the toothpick and I'm I'm dipping it into the tube of paint. You could absolutely pour the paint into uh, you know a palette or anything and and uh, and take from that, but I don't like to put it in a palette myself because sometimes it just takes me a while and I don't want the paint to dry up. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, so uh, especially in thin layers like I'm putting it in here. Isaac, no problem. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, I will hear from you on the next video. Thanks for coming. All right, that pretty much is that. Is it for that next tire? I do a little bit of touch up on that later. Thanks, Isaac. I uh, yeah, I'm gonna have more videos and and probably gonna be focusing on a couple more little projects uh, here and there that everybody can do at home. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to to the next one. Unfortunately, these tires on this truck are actually um, these tires on this truck are actually uh, very old. They're the oldest set of tires that I have uh, in my shop in total. I mean, these are the the oldest tires, and the reason being is I can't really get new tires uh, and wheels for this truck because of these uh, green wheels on the inside. Because this is a limited edition truck. Uh, you can't actually find these these wheels very easily at all. Um, hang on, reading comment from Shiggy. I'm replacing my old server because uh, on my old one, when I turned to the left, it couldn't turn. Kept making clicking sounds. So that's probably uh, gears that are broken uh, on the inside. Um, yep, found out it had broken glass gears and not the metal ones that the seller said it had huh well if that if it didn't have metal gears and that's not good and especially if they said that it, it did uh, i've never had that issue um that's unfortunate um but yeah the, the clicking noise is definitely the gears most of my trucks do have plastic gears uh in their servos just because those are the more common servos although now metal servos are or metal gear servos are definitely getting uh, more popular, uh, especially for crawlers, uh, and that's pretty much the the truck I have uh, metal servos uh, for uh, is my my uh, TRX four. Um, this this tire in specific is very hard to follow the lines because it's worn down so much um, so I may have to go back and redo this one later uh, doing my best here it's gonna be okay but this one is definitely the hardest one to trace out because it's so worn down the only time I've replaced this trucks uh, rear tires uh, was many years ago before I had this channel and um, that kinda just gives you a, a look at how old these tires are because this channel's been going since I think 2016 uh, or maybe it was 2017 so very old tires on this truck yeah when you're when you're in the RC hobby um, Shiggy just said uh, so now I'm buying 20 pounds worth of parts new parts when when you're in the RC hobby you're gonna find that you just 
consume parts and parts and parts, especially when you have bashing trucks like monster trucks or buggies, um, stadium trucks, stuff like that. You're going to get a lot of part uh, consumption. I've got definitely way too many spare parts. Um, it's a tremendous amount of parts that I keep on hand. I keep at least uh, one of every electronic um, as well as uh, tons of screws and bolts and nuts, um, all sorts of plastic parts. So yeah, parts is definitely something you're going to have uh, on hand. Danny Jordan, uh, what are you doing? I am painting the sidewalls of, uh, of the uh, tires, my Traxxas tires on my Traxxas monster truck. I'm just painting the logo white. Um, with a little bit of acrylic paint and I'm using a toothpick to brush it on so it's very fine um, just tracing over the little bumped out logo uh, so just doing that to all four of these I've got this one's almost done and then we're gonna do this last one and then just do a little bit of talking on here um, uh, compared to what you spent on your Miata if you're talking about your, your real Miata, that's very cool. Um, yeah, that's uh, full-scale Miatas. Those are, I, I definitely, I'm a car person. I'm, I, I love cars. That's part of what got me into RCs. And I actually have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge in, in cars. I've spent a lot of time with cars. And I have a few videos on my channel, deeper down, of uh, autocross events that I've filmed uh, with cars and a lot of Miatas there. Um, so if, if you've got a Miata and, and, uh, and you like that kind of stuff, go deeper into the channel and find my autocross videos. Um, those are, those are pretty fun. All right. That one's off to the side now. Um, Danny Jordan, no point in doing that. This is purely aesthetic. There is absolutely nothing that is mechanical going on here. I just do it because I'm at home. Um, and uh, I have nothing better to do <laughs> uh, other than live stream and uh, do this with you guys. Uh, also, I'm uh, doing it because it's very cool to see the rotation of the tires in the air. And when you have something painted on like this, like this logo, uh, it's pretty cool to see how fast the tires are spinning. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, purely aesthetic. Let me check the comments. Um, I'm not too worried about the paint coming off because I've done it to my other three trucks and uh, so far uh, I've run them several times with the paint and so far it's not come off. As long as I wait for the paint to dry completely, uh, there's actually uh, no reason why it would fall off unless you really rub it into some dirt uh, and have a lot of friction that takes it off. But uh, so far, uh, several runs through my other trucks and I've not lost any of the paint yet. And I'll I'll, uh, I'll show you guys uh, one of those trucks shortly. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so it's a different car. Okay, well, that's still cool. Um, I uh, like I said, you can check out those autocross videos that I've done. Um, they're very cool. All sorts of cars. Uh, a lot of them are Miatas because Miatas tend to handle very well on, on little road courses. Um, and I mean, these autocross events are basically parking lots uh, with cones set up. But uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, Miatas, a lot of Honda S2000s, um, Ford Mustangs, and uh, stuff like that. So definitely check out, check out those videos. I think I've got a few of them on there. Um, you can check those out, and, uh, and I think you might like those, besides all the RC stuff that's on here. Alright, coming up on finishing this last tire here, and then we're going to let them dry before we put them back on. And in the meantime, I'm going to get one of my other trucks and show you guys the roll cage I put on it. This is a very, t well, not a very time consuming. I've been streaming now for just 
about 30 minutes, and um, it's taken me this long to do them, although I did not start immediately once I started streaming, so less than 30 minutes, um, but it's not necessary, I understand that, it's just interesting, um, it's, it looks good, and uh, it's something to do. All right, there's the last one. Move that to the side. I'm gonna just get the paint off of this toothpick. Close up the tube. Shiggy, they are the same thing basically, just mine has a Japanese name and spent a couple years in Japan. Okay, I see. Um, basically the name Hiata is only used in North America to describe them. Yeah, because they, yeah, um, they are MX, they're the MX series, uh, MX5. Um, yeah, I understand what you mean. Thanks for, for writing that in there. Uh, this was the first tire that I did as a test. It's a completely run-down tire. There's barely any tread left. I mean, there's a little bit, but not much. So this was my, my testing tire to see if I would like the logo the way it was here, and that's what it looks like. It's completely dry, and I'm rubbing over it. I'm even taking my fingernail and trying to pull the paint off. It's actually not coming off. Uh, it does stay on there pretty well. So I'm not too worried about the paint coming off. And here's the thing, is if it does eventually peel off with water or uh, just a lot of use, it's okay, because it can be painted back on if I really want to. Uh, so, not not a big deal. I'm going to move these wheel nuts off to the side. Got paint on my fingers. And let's get... Um, I'm going to get my Max D here over here in a second. Um, Yeah, so uh, with the tires, with the green rims, yes, they definitely do need uh, new tires. The tread is worn down. Like I said, it's very hard to get tires like this because the the green uh, rims. So what I actually need to do is I need to get a whole set of four, and then I'm going to take a, uh, a hot air dryer and basically uh, just melt the glue that's around the edge uh, that holds the wheel together to the tire and then uh, put new tires on so I can keep these same uh, rims. And that's what I'm going to do eventually on this channel, uh, but not right now because currently uh, it's not very easy to order things online due to current events, and uh, when things die down, I will definitely be getting, uh, definitely be getting uh, new tires for this truck. Yeah, tires range in, in uh, prices. These these tires, uh, I don't know how much they cost unmounted without the rim. With the rim, they're about, I think, $60 for a, uh, for a whole set of four, uh, $30 for two. Um, I think that's about how much they are. But uh, other tires that I've had to buy, drift car tires, those are actually pretty pretty inexpensive. Um, T-Rex 4 tires, those are, those are much pricier. Crawler tires are, are much higher uh, priced. And um, yeah, those are pretty much the vehicles I've had to buy tires for in the past. Um, let me get the Max D here. Hang on one second. Alrighty, I'm going to pull this out of the way, and this is what I did recently, is I put this roll cage on this monster truck, and it looks really good. Roll cage is very old, um, like I said, it's, it's probably about maybe four or five years old, um, so it's definitely beat up a little bit but nothing that is going to compromise its integrity. Uh, and uh, it's just held in with a few screws around the sides, and uh, it looks really good. It does 
protect some of the electronics in here. Uh, I've had some comments on the videos in the past when I run without the bodies because the bodies are pretty limited edition uh, or at least very rare now. And, and uh, I do run without the bodies very often and that does expose the electronics that are inside the receiver box, the ESC most especially. Um, so there is that, but with this roll cage, it's super tough. Um, it adds a little bit of weight, not too much. Uh, it probably adds maybe no more than a pound, uh, but nothing that the truck can't handle. Like if I press down the suspension, it comes back up no problem. There is a little bit extra that can come up more but nothing that was too drastic. Um, so I'm gonna keep this up on the table for you guys to see. Um, I looked at a tire video and I want some uh, really knobbly tires. Uh, okay, so then you're, you're looking for more traction then, I'm guessing, uh, shaky. Um, yeah, traction's something you can always have a lot of. Um, I'm not going to lie though, when you have tr tires that are a little bit more worn down, especially with my uh, track that I've got in my backyard, which I just posted a video on uh, just before this video, um, that track is very fun to drive on with slightly worn down tires because you get to slide around a lot, especially if the dirt is uh, drier. Um, you can slide around a lot and really just use a lot of power. Um, the more traction you have, the less... Uh, sliding you're going to do. I like sliding around. Some people really want the traction. Um, I definitely, you know, know when it's good to have traction, especially when it comes to cr uh, rock crawlers and, um, you know, needing more traction for certain terrain. But uh, this this truck with slightly worn down tires, are not very worn down. They do look a little bit more worn on camera than they are in person, but um, they are definitely uh, fun to drive with, with slightly worn tires. Um, I have not seen people use, uh, I have not actually seen people use cellophane um, to, to wrap their electronics, although that does sound like it might work. Um, I, I will look up that RC car, Shiggy. I will look it up when, when we're done here. Um, or maybe I can do it right now. MN90 Defender. Um, hang on one second. I'm going to look it up here on my phone. Okay, yeah. No, that's definitely a crawler. So, yeah, you're, you're going to want more traction, of course. Um... Yeah, more traction is definitely something that's much better for a crawler. Um, yeah, that's a, a good a good looking truck. I don't know. Uh, I I don't think that um, that's a, a bad rig at all. That looks like a good a good crawler. Um, yeah. So that's what that's what you need the servo for then. So you need a crawler servo. So that's especially disappointing to hear that it was not a Metal Gear servo because uh, I think that uh, uh, I think that Metal Gear servos on rock crawlers are definitely more beneficial um, because rock crawlers experience a lot of tension on the servos when you're crawling uh, in certain terrain that you know kind of resists against the servo from steering. So. Having a steel gear servo or any kind of metal gear servo is definitely much better. Uh, my TRX4 came with that. Uh, I actually uh, got mine as a kit version. Uh, Traxxas TRX4. I have a whole build series of it on the uh, channel. And it came with a metal gear servo. And I'm very glad about that. Uh, because if it didn't, I would get one. But since it came with one, I don't need to worry about that. Um... That's that look. I I don't know exactly uh, what pounds relates to to U.S. dollars, but uh, forty pounds does not sound like a lot. That's probably a pretty good price for a truck like that. So uh, yeah, that's a good good truck. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the roll cage. 
I really like the way it looks and I'm going to be getting roll cages for my other vehicles as well. Uh, I have a total of four monster trucks similar to this, although they all have different, uh, uh, they all have different uh, upgrades, but I do plan on getting roll cages that are a little bit different. They're going to be more SUV style, so a little bit uh, wider back here and narrower uh, up front. But that's that's the plan in the future. And and by the way, the brand of this roll cage is Intigy, uh, which is the same as what I have on the A arms and the skid plates on this truck. Uh, it says it right there on the front of the A arm. And move this back out of the way. About thirty-five dollars. Yeah, then that's pretty good. All right. Don't know if these are dry yet. I think they are. We're going to go ahead and put them on. We're not running the truck tonight, so they'll have plenty of time to dry. I'm going to start on this side. What are the benefits to metal shocks to plastic shocks? Um, if you're using, uh, a, um, if you're, if you've got a monster truck or something, the benefits are, are probably, um, I, I would say the benefits are greater if you have a monster truck, uh, although a lot of rock crawlers do come with metal shocks, but um, the benefits are going to be uh, less breakage, especially of the shock caps, uh, which can blow out a lot, uh, and when that happens, a lot of oil gets uh, spewed everywhere um, these are proline um, these are proline power stroke shocks on this truck different than the other truck with the roll cage um, and these have full metal uh, shock caps up here a full metal uh, uh, well aluminum body and then aluminum shaft uh, that goes down uh, the only thing that's plastic is the rod end down here which is okay. Uh, those are pretty easy to get replacements for, and I do have some. But uh, the metal shock caps is really the the, the best thing to have. Um, if you don't have uh, aluminum uh, shock bodies, I would suggest or I would recommend getting aluminum shock caps because those are good to have, uh, and they take a lot of the uh, the force when you come on the landing, uh, and and they pretty much just absorb a lot of that that shock. So they can break easily if they're plastic. I have broken them many times before I got the aluminum ones. And really just the main benefit is you don't have to replace them so much. So uh, again, some may think that, you know, it could be aesthetic. I personally think that they're a pretty good upgrade, um, but they are not a necessity. Also, my shocks were getting stuck down. Was it a wise idea of me to spray them with WD-40? I mean, it worked. If it worked, then that's fine. Um, I am a user of WD-40. I have uh, a couple videos on here where I've used it. A lot of people say that it's not good for, uh, you know, lubing or, you know, oiling up a truck. It depends on what you use it for. Uh, I would not recommend putting WD-40 in a transmission, but on a shock or on a axle joint, yes, I think that it's fine. Um, the only downside to putting WD-40 on a shock, especially, is WD-40 is going to attract some dirt. Uh, so if you're running through a lot of dirt or dust or sand, uh, it's most likely going to get caught up in there. But other than that... Um, I would say that uh, I would say that it's it's a good a good choice to do that, especially if it worked. What is the longest distance for the controller to maintain radio control? That is a good question, and uh, it varies on how old the transmitter and receiver are, uh, what kind of system it is. The newer transmitters that come with RC cars are typically two point four gigahertz. 
um, which they can travel very, very far. Um, if they lose signal, the usually what will happen is the truck will stop responding to the remote, but it won't keep driving away from you in most cases. Uh, in some cases it could, but uh, I've personally never had that issue. The truck always stops uh, when it loses signal. As far as actual distance, I don't think there is an actual uh, an actual amount of distance like in, in feet or or even miles. I don't think that there is a, a measurement specifically. Uh, the location that you're driving in definitely depends uh, or it affects that that range as well. If there's a lot of objects or a lot of electronic devices that interfere, that can definitely you know affect it. But uh, in most cases, if you're on an open street, you could, you know, easily go at least 400 feet from you, uh, and usually you'll still be able to have, uh, still be able to have range. Um, I usually drive them no more than maybe 300 feet from me, uh, and they do fine. So uh, I would say that that's a pretty good range, but uh, they could probably go much further as well. Um, you got WD-40 everywhere. Well, it can be it can be removed if uh, you take some soap and water. Uh, you know, most RCs, especially crawlers, need to be waterproof. So uh, if if you just clean it off, that's not a big deal. Um, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's it's okay if you've got WD-40. I definitely put WD-40 on uh, my moving joints of my, my trucks, especially um, the wheels, because that keeps them from being squeaky. Uh, also, when I wash a uh, when I wash an RC, um, and uh, I do like to use my garden hose to just you know clean the trucks because they're waterproof and a garden hose is very effective at cleaning them. Uh, I like to just take. A little shot of WD-40 and put it in the in the brushed motor. Uh, that just helps it from getting rusted, uh, and there's really no issue with that. Uh, if you wait a little bit of time before you run the truck again, you're not going to get too much buildup of dirt in the uh, in the motor. It's still a possibility, but the motor is also spinning very fast, uh, so for the opportunity for dirt to get in there is pretty low, especially on one of these trucks because it's moving so fast. Uh, and propelling away from it. Um, yours goes up to 25 meters, uh, which is good for yeah for $35. Um, yeah, that's that's a good range. I think that's 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 a fine range. Um, don't know if it's waterproof. Yeah, that's the thing is is if it's if you don't really know. It's better to stay on the safe side and not use it in water. Uh, if you're if you don't know if it's waterproof or not, that's definitely the safe option. Um, if you if you take the risk, you know, keeping essential electronics from getting wet is definitely uh, better. Um, you know, in the case of this truck, for example, I could easily run it in water that's about this deep, and it would be okay. But if I go higher. I would not personally, even though it's all waterproof, I would not purchase this truck. Uh, you could. These trucks are made completely waterproof, but I, I don't think that they should be submerged. Um, I know a lot of people have done that before when they do uh, rock crawling through rivers, um, which I have not done with my, my TRX-4 yet, but um, they are made to do that. But I, I do like to keep them above water, uh, and the most that I run these trucks through water is if it's a wet street, a puddle, or snow occasionally. So it depends on what what uh, what you consider uh, a lot of water. But waterproof, at least it would most likely be water resistant. Uh, your RC, um, I would think it would be water resistant. So if you've seen other people you use it in water as well. That's also uh, a, a, another reason you could believe it could be waterproof. But if you don't, if you don't want to risk it, I would not recommend doing it then. Um, it's, it's really something you try at your own, own risk um, if you want to do it. So, yeah. So that's it. The tires are done. Um, the paint 
is pretty much dry here. Um, and when, when the truck is driving, obviously, you'll be able to see that rotation, and that's really why I did it. It's the cool little aesthetic thing uh, to do like that. Unfortunately, there's not another logo on the opposite side. If there were, I would paint it as well and have opposing logos, but uh, I do not have that, and uh, I'm not going to freehand it because I'm not that good of an artist. Um, but that's going to be it for this truck, pretty much. Show you guys the other side. So, um, check comments. You're not sure. Um, oh, so you're not sure if because other people might have upgraded theirs. Yeah, then, yeah, if you're not sure, it's probably side. Um, of course, you could also try to waterproof your electronics. Uh, most motors, uh, like this, brushed motors, brushless motors, they usually can handle water. Um, uh, any kind. They don't need any kind of casing. Uh, they just are always open. So those motors are usually good. It's mainly your receiver and your speed control that you need to look out for. And also the servo can be uh, exposed to water, but the servos are a slightly less risk uh, just because they're, they're a little bit, the placement of them is not so exposed. These guys are more exposed, I think. Uh, I don't know where they're placed on your Defender, but, uh, you know, you could waterproof them yourself. Um, if your receiver has a casing like this and it's not exposed, uh, it's probably waterproof, especially if you have a little rubber seal that goes around the edge of the case uh, on the inside, then it's definitely waterproof. Uh, your speed control, usually they'll say that they're waterproof on them. Like this one here says Trax is waterproof. XL5 ESC. So if you uh, want to look at that, maybe you'll be able to determine if it's waterproof or not. Not all of them say waterproof, but a lot of them do, especially the hobby grade ones do say that they're waterproof. Um, and then the batteries as well are something else that need to be considered. And uh, most batteries can handle water because they're shrink wrapped. Um, the cells are shrink wrapped. Uh, so those are usually able to take some water as well. Again, I like to think of everything as water resistant, not completely waterproof, because I don't think that any anything should really be completely submerged. Uh, but I do think that uh, things can be water resistant enough that you can take them for a little bit of snow uh, or definitely in the rain. Yeah, I know, uh, making you want to fix your RC. Uh, yeah, the whole current, uh, the current events that are currently going on is, it's unfortunate. Um, hopefully things will get better soon. Uh, I do think that we will start to see some things changing in a good way uh, in the very near future. And um, if that's the case, then hopefully we can start to go back and, you know, go back to our normal uh, routines. Of course, things may never fully recover. Uh, uh, as in terms of, uh, you know, some people may be a little bit more afraid uh, for something like this could happen again. But if that's the case, you know, you might be more prepared, and that might not be the worst thing if you have a healthy fear of it. Uh, in any case, um, it is unfortunate for us that one parts uh, on online. I definitely have that same issue because I'm definitely wanting to get roll cages for the other trucks and uh and some other projects that i want to show you guys on this channel so um unfortunately those things have put been put on hold but that's when stuff like this painting these logos and working on the track and i've got a couple other things that i'm going to show you guys in this coming week um come in come in handy some projects you can do at home with materials you most likely have uh stuff like that uh i completely understand where you're coming from when you say that Shiggy, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that uh, you've been finding my videos helpful. Uh, I really tried to do uh, a lot of, uh, 
I really tried to do a lot of um, how-to videos um, on this channel so that way people can can really, uh, you know, find inform information that can really help. Um, that's how I started this whole channel, because I was looking for certain videos on how to do things with RCs that I didn't know how to do. And once I figured those methods out, I just started making videos about it because I wanted to share it with other people. So I'm glad that that uh, worked for you. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's certain things that you need to, to know about, uh, if, there's, if there's a uh, part that's broken, you don't know how to fix it or something, and it's a pretty general uh, part that can, can be related to other vehicles, you know, just let me know and I can make videos for it because I've got the time. And... Um, and most likely some of the resources that can can be used for that. Uh, for the most part, though, that is why I made this channel, called it the RC Genius, so that way people can learn uh, things that uh, they may may need to know about their RCs, because uh, there's a lot to know about them, in especially maintenance. Um, you know, there are things in other categories as well, like driving style and uh, locations and stuff like that, but. For the most part, it's maintenance. Uh, people need to know how to do it, and a lot of RC cars are very technical. This truck that's in front of me is not a very technical truck. Um, it's a pretty straightforward chassis with uh, suspension arms, uh, you know, a simple transmission, uh, two-wheel drive. It's not not a very complex build. But when you look at something like a Traxxas TRX4 or most RC crawlers, for that matter, uh, the drift car, which is four-wheel drive, those are much more complex. Uh, when you when you start to get into them, uh, you have two differentials, one in the rear, one in the front. Uh, you've got uh, you know a lot more happening, uh, especially the TRX4 where you've got sh uh, you know a two-speed transmission, uh, locking and unlocking differentials. It gets much much more uh, advanced than what this is. Um, so I've not yet made many how-to videos with those vehicles yet because they actually have not broken. Uh, those vehicles are not, you know, heavy bashing trucks that are going to take a lot of a beating. Um, these things do. So I decided to, to make videos on this stuff because this is the most common kind of vehicle that's going to break um, with more common things like uh, camber links and uh, caster blocks and steering knuckles, stuff like that. So... That's why I made these videos, and uh, I appreciate you uh, you finding them helpful and, and saying so. We are coming up on an hour stream now. Probably going to be pretty soon, especially if we don't get any other uh, don't get any other viewers here or any other questions. Um, if you guys uh, if you guys have any last question you want to post and uh, you want me to answer, put them up now because I'm probably going to be uh, cutting this stream off uh, pretty shortly. I might do a series with my MN90 about uh, budget rock crawlers using the cheapest useful parts I can find. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, that that's probably going to be a, a fun project. You know, RC parts, depending on where you get them and depending on what brand they are uh, and also what material they're made out of, um, they can be very inexpensive. Um, you know, this, uh, these RPM A-arms stop. Streams lagging, yeah. Something just happened on, on my camera here. Not sure what happened. It said it disconnected. So let me know if it's uh, connected back up now. Um, but you get everything off of eBay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, even used parts is not a bad thing, although you do take the risk that something might be worn down uh, from somebody who previously used it. But, you know, nothing, nothing terrible there. Um, in the, uh, the stream... Any last questions, and then I am going to uh, call it a night here.
Alrighty, I think that's going to do it for tonight, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed this live stream. Like I said at the beginning of this video, uh, I do not usually uh, live stream on this channel. Uh, I tend to do other videos that are a little bit more uh, informational and also uh, a little bit more edited, so that way that they're not as long as this video. But uh, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight right now. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm glad you guys... Um, I'm glad that you guys uh, are watching it again if you are. A um, couple last questions here. What kind of motor is in that? This is the stock Traxxas Titan 12 turn 550 motor. It is a brush motor um, and it's a very, very good time. Um, it pretty much is almost nearly indestructible. Uh, it's waterproof and uh, yeah, it's pretty fast as well. Um, this one's been in this truck for quite a while, although it may need to be replaced at some point soon because sometimes it does act a little funny. Uh, but that is the motor that's in here. Titan 12 turn 550. Uh, 550 is the size of the motor. Um, and uh, Titan 12 turn, 12 turn is the rotation rate of the motor. So uh, that is the motor that's in here. A lot of people ask me why. I go, um, yeah, no problem, the e-boy. Um, I, uh, I get a lot of questions why I don't go brushless, because I just don't need to. Uh, I prefer to, to, to use brush motors, less expensive to replace. Uh, they are perfectly, you know, enough power, enough speed, don't need much more than that. I feel like if I got much more power than that, I'd probably start breaking a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, I find that, that this motor is just what I need. What's the difference be between normal and brushless motors? Brushless motors are a lot faster. Um, they also are uh, able to accept a much higher voltage um, than these batteries, or I mean than, than these motors. Uh, the batteries that I run in these trucks are 8.4 volt um, nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, usually with a brushless system, you're going to use LiPo batteries, which most LiPos on the higher end have up to 11.1 volts. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's about the right, right voltage. So when you have that much voltage, um, you, uh, you get a lot more speed, a lot more power, and sometimes a lot more runtime, depending on what kind of battery. So uh, that's pretty much the main difference, is you're going to get more speed with a brushless motor. Um, and with a brushless motor, you also need a brushless speed control. So that's what makes the swap so expensive because you need to get the speed control and the motor. And, uh, that's a pretty, pretty pricey swap out. Another factor of why I personally don't go with brushless. All right, any other questions here? Oh, I see I missed one from Shiggy. Would you consider a budget RC car series? You know, I would. Um, nothing stopping me from doing that. Uh, I've got a lot of projects that I would love to share with you guys. My last one was the fire truck. Um, but uh, I definitely uh, would consider doing that one day. Um, I would love to build a short course truck because that's kind of something I don't have. My brother has a, a Traxxas Slash, but uh, I never really got into the short course trucks. So that may be something in the future that would be a fun project to do. Um, and uh, Shiggy, no problem. Glad I could help you. Uh, yeah, there's no super chat, but uh, thank you. I appreciate your support. Um, and uh, and maybe I'll, uh, I'll stream soon and, and hopefully... See you next time. Otherwise, just keep enjoying the videos, and um, and I will, uh, of course, respond to comments on any videos that I've got. Uh, I try to respond to as many of them as I can uh, for people that need help with certain things. Um, yes, I do have an email, Shiggy. Um, it's on my channel. If you go to the About page uh, on my channel, uh, it's the rcgenius at gmail, so uh, you can email any questions you've got there as well. Alrighty, so uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, if you guys got any other questions that uh, you need, you want to ask after I end this stream, you can always put it 
on this video or any other video uh, that you need help with. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I uh, hope you guys are all staying safe and that you enjoyed this stream. Good night, and I will see you guys next time on the RC Genius.